Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Our sermon text is the Gospel lesson, Luke chapter 24, verses 6 to 7. He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of of sinful men and be crucified on the third day and rise. The women came to prepare the body of Jesus, but his body was already gone. They expected to find their Lord Jesus, but they found an empty tomb. They were expecting the resurrection on the last day, but not a resurrection today. They had their job to do, but now they find themselves confused and afraid and bewildered. Instead of the man they hope to find, they find two men, so says Luke anyway. Now Mark says one man, John says two angels, And Matthew says, one angel. So which gospel writer is right? Well, with God and his word, sometimes the simple answer is yes. They're all right. Because it is God's word, after all. See, whatever they record for us, from their perspective, from their point of view, is exactly what we need to hear right? We think that everything in scripture has to make sense and be logical in our very tiny, limited, rational minds. We often think that we know exactly what God should do even or how he should do it or when he should act and what it should look like. We even think that we can tell him his job. Sometimes more often than I like to admit, I put myself in the driver's seat. You see, we put ourselves in the driver's seat and and God becomes just some sort of passenger to ride along. But no, God is in the driver's seat. Last Sunday's crowd expected Jesus to stay and to rule, to do something about the Roman government and the Jewish leaders, and to be that perfect king, everything right in the line of David. But no, it did not happen for them. And as the week progressed, and then we get to Good Friday, and Jesus is on the cross, and he is dying, and he dies, that doesn't make sense to them either. These women expect to find their Lord Jesus right where he was laid, but he is not there. The men have to ask them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Or they could have asked, or maybe we would ask them, why don't you get it? Didn't he tell you over and over what had to happen? This is yet another example of the followers of Jesus not really getting it. And what about us? We have his word. It's in the pages of Holy Scripture, but do we read it? We have churches open every Sunday, but do we attend? The two men have to remind them that it was God's will to do this. Remember how he told you, how he kept on telling and telling you, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And on the third day, rise. Alleluia, Christ is risen. By finding nothing in the tomb, 
they actually find the best thing. Even if they don't understand this, I hope that you do. It's good that the tomb is empty. His victory over sin, death, and the power of Satan is your victory today. If you're baptized into his death and resurrection, well, just wait. Your day is coming, and it's a good day. When your days come to an end on earth, fear not. The Lord, your God, is with you. When Jesus comes again, then you'll experience a resurrection of your own. The emptiness of the tomb fills us all with peace and with hope, not fear and bewilderment. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Amen. May the peace that surpasses all understanding be with your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand for prayer.